Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Brass Monkey X. So, today I'm going to be showing you guys how I clean my Walther PK380. So, as always guys, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to safety check this gun. As you can see, there's no magazine in there. Nothing in the chamber. The chamber is empty. So, I love this gun. It's a cool little shooter. Um, the only issue is field stripping this gun. Taking it apart and then putting it back together is kind of annoying to do. It's not difficult, it's just kind of a pain in the ass. Um, once you get it apart, the cleaning process is pretty much the same as any other semi-automatic pistol out there. But like I said, getting it apart and putting it back together, a little bit of a pain in the butt. So uh, let me just show you guys how this is done. Now with the Walther PK380, they give you this little tool here. It's like a key. This key, don't ever lose it. I mean, you could probably find another way to turn this thing, but don't lose your key, guys. This hole here, your key gets inserted into that hole, like so. And then you're just going to turn this as far as it'll go. Now it doesn't go a full 180 degrees, as you can see. It almost goes 180 degrees, but it stops just short. So you're going to turn your key, and then this is your takedown lever here. If you can see it's ambidextrous, it's on both sides. You just go ahead and pop that down, and then your slide is going to come right off. Just push the trigger, and there you go. Slide comes off. So now you've separated your two halves. We can go ahead and set this off to the side for a minute. Now, this is our slide, okay? Looks just like any other slide. You got to be real careful with this spring. This spring is actually under a lot of pressure. And when you put this back together, this spring is going to give you all kinds of trouble, guys. So what I like to do is I just get in here with a pick. Keep my hand over it. I pop it off. You can feel when it goes. Just make sure it doesn't go shooting across the room. And there you go. So you got your spring and your guide rod here. Okay, I'll set those off to the side as well. And then you can go ahead, pull your barrel out, just like any other gun. And we're fully disassembled at this point. That's all we got to do. Um, so, like always with any other gun, we're going to use our Hops number 9 bore cleaner here. We'll just go ahead and spray everything down. So we'll start here with the slide. Spray some all up in there. Set that down. Spray some down in the barrel. Spray the outside of the barrel as well. We'll get our guide rod. You don't need too much on there. Same thing with the spring. You don't have to overdo it. And then our frame here. Let's go ahead and get down in there. Just like that. And we're pretty much done with our bore cleaner. We go ahead and set that off to the side. All right. So we're going to let our bore cleaner soak in. Okay, we're going to set some of these parts off to the side here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with our barrel. We're going to go ahead and get a, our bore brush here. Put it on our cleaning rod. Okay, now we've already sprayed the bore cleaner down in there. We're just going to take our brush, run that through a couple times back and forth. Let's make sure we work that bore cleaner in real good. Okay, let that soak in and do what it does. Now we can go ahead and start wiping off some of these parts. Um, we'll start here with the guide rod and the spring. I usually do those first. We'll just get a cleaning patch. Again, hops number nine cleaning patches. Just give that a good wipe. As you can see, it really wasn't that dirty. Again, there's another gun I had to go qualify with, so I only put like 100 rounds through it. Not too many rounds, but I like to keep my stuff real clean. But that's pretty much clean. We'll set that off to the side there. We'll wipe off our spring real quick. Set that off to the side. Um, all right, we'll go ahead and do the frame now. So like always, we're just going to take our cloth. Get in here, wipe off all that bore cleaner that we sprayed on. And yes, that key does hang out of there the entire time. 
I know it's really annoying. I don't know why Walther designed it that way, but that's the design they went with, so it is what it is. But we'll just get in here. Wipe off all that board cleaner, and as you can see, all that crud's coming off of there. All that built up carbon. Um, if you got a lot, you might want to get in here with a nylon brush. If it's real bad and you got a lot of carbon in there. Like I said, this one wasn't too bad. I only put about 100 rounds through it, so let's give it a quick, quick brush. Just like that. Again, guys, there's a there's a thousand different ways to clean a gun. You might have a different method than I do. Somebody may have taught you a little different. It's all right. Everybody does things differently. It's no big deal. Just showing you guys how I clean mine. Now, to get some of them tighter spots down there, you might want to get yourself a pick. Make sure it's a nylon pick, though. I don't like to use the metal ones because I don't want to scratch anything up in there. So for some of them harder-to-reach spots... You just put a cloth on there and you go ahead and get your pick and you stick your pick down there with the cloth. Make sure you're getting the rails real good. You want to keep the rails real clean. Anywhere where you can't get your fat fingers in, that's where you want to use the pick. Alright, once you're done with the pick, what I like to do is I get a fresh Q-tip and I give it a once over with the Q-tip. Again, make sure I'm getting the rails real good. You think you got it good and then you get in there with the Q-tip and you start getting more of that crud out of there. You just want to make sure you get all of the bore cleaner off. It's not good to leave it on there. All right, that's pretty good, guys. So we're just going to set that frame off to the side now. Um, we'll go ahead and do our slide. Same process for the slide. Come in here with a cloth at first. I wipe down what I can with that. See, that was actually pretty dirty in there. 380, it reminds me of 22 a little bit. It's it's pretty dirty stuff, guys. I mean, you can get some clean burning stuff, but I guess whatever I used to qualify with was kind of dirty. It is what it is. All right, now we get our brush. Loosen up some of that stubborn stuff in there. Again, we'll use our pick. No way I'm fitting my fingers down in there. All right, and come in with our Q-tip. Finish everything up. It's actually really dirty up there. And try and get in there again. There we go. Perfect. Set that off to the side. And now we got our barrel. So to clean our barrel, what we're going to do is we're going to use one of these jigs here. We're going to put this on our cleaning rod. 
go ahead and get a cloth put that on there okay we're just going to come in from the breech end and just work it through i like to come through and then come back through this way okay inspect it make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do put another pad on there and what we're going to do is we're going to run this through a couple of times it usually takes three or four passes just run it through come back again inspect it see how dirty it is Still coming out a little dirty. So we'll do it one more time. Get some back and forth action going a little bit. Really scrub it out. And we'll give it one more pass just to be safe. There you go, guys. That's looking pretty good. Not too bad at all. Um, you can go ahead and take another patch, clean off the outside of the barrel if you want. Now we're just going to make sure our feed ramp is nice and clean there. Don't want to let that get dirty because it may lead to feed issues. Last thing you want is uh, feeding issues when your life depends on it. So make sure that's nice and clean. No sit on there at all. Get all that carbon build up off. Not really focusing very well, but there you go, guys. See, nice and clean. All right, so all of our parts are clean of bore cleaner now. So the next step is to lubricate and put this thing back together so to lubricate everything we're going to use our hops number nine as always i like to start with the frame i just take a q-tip okay put some oil on it you can be real 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 uh, liberal with it guys i like to use a lot of oil i, I don't believe in over lubrication The more oil you use, the better, if you ask me. Keeps everything running real smooth. You want to make sure you get those rails real good. That's where everything's going to be sliding. Anything where you're going to have metal on metal contact, you want to lubricate it. I'm put a little more oil on there. We'll get the top of these rails. Okay. And down here in the back where the hammer is, get a little bit of oil down there. These tiny little springs in there, you want to make sure all your springs have oil on them. Oh. And then down there in the trigger, make sure you get the trigger mechanism as well. You want to keep that running real smooth. All right, so our frame is uh, all lubed up. Now we're going to do the same thing for the slide. Just put some oil on the Q-tip. And you want to get here where the rails are going to ride. Okay, right in there. You want to make sure you get that real good. Both sides. And all this stuff here in the back, make sure you get a little bit of oil back here. The safety mechanism, oil that up. All 
And right there, where your firing pin comes out. Sorry, let me see here. Oh, it's hard to show you. There's a lot of stuff in the way there. That little hole where the firing pin is. I like to get a little bit of oil there too. Just to keep that lubed up a little bit. If that's not working for you, you can actually take the oil container and just put a little drop in there. All right, so our slide's oiled up, and we've got our we've got our recoil spring and our guide rod here. Now, how I do these is I don't use the Q-tip. I'll just use another patch. I'll put a little bit of oil on the patch. I'll just take my guide rod and run it through the patch like this. So yeah, it's nice and oiled. Same thing with the spring. Just start at one end, and you can just twist. As you twist, it'll pull it through. Good to go. Now we have our barrel. So how I lubricate my barrels is I'll take the barrel at the breech end. I mean, if you can't get to the breech end, if you're doing some kind of rifle, you may want to do it from the muzzle end. Um, but what I do is I just put four drops of oil in the barrel. I'll put one drop at the six o'clock position, put one drop at the 12 o'clock, one at the three, and one at the nine, like so. I'll give it a second to work in there. And then what you do is, you take your cleaning rod with your jig on it, take a patch, you're just gonna run a clean patch through there just to move all that oil around. Go through, come back, and you can just work it a little bit back and forth. Just get that oil all through there. And there you go, nice and lubed. All right guys, so the lubrication process is done. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna reassemble now. Now, it reassembles in the, the same order you took it apart, okay? It's basically like any other semi-automatic pistol. You're going to take your barrel, put that in first, drop that into place. And now, this can be a real pain in the butt, all right? Putting your, your spring and your guide rod back in. It's really difficult to do on the PK380. Um, you're going to end up pinching your finger. I do it every time, but this is it, I find this to be the easiest method to do. There's a lot of different methods out there. Some people say to use like a dowel and put a dowel through the front here to help guide everything. That That's a pain in the butt. If you just take your guide rod, put it in your spring, okay? And what you're going to do is put your slide down. You're going to stick the end of your spring in that hole in the front there, okay? Now what you're going to do is Hold on to the spring with your left hand. And then you're going to slowly work the guide rod into the spring. Okay? You're going to do this until the guide rod pops out through that hole in the front, like so. You're going to go past the point where you need it to be and just shove it down in there. Okay? And what's going to happen is it's not going to be in the right place. It's going to be crooked. Okay? That's fine. Not a big deal. You want to get it up onto that little lip on the barrel there. Okay, so what you do is you get your pick, keep your hand over everything so it doesn't pop out. You put your pick in there and you just work it over until it pops into place. You'll hear it pop into place. There it goes. Once you hear that click, you know you're good. Double check it. Make sure it's in place, which it is and you're good. That's the easiest way I find to do this, is to hold on to the spring, push the guide rod all the way through the front end, okay? And then shove it down in there as far as it'll go. And it's not gonna be in the right place. Work it with the pick until it pops into place and you're good. You're not gonna have any springs flying across your garage or anything, you're good to go. So now what you do is, just like any other pistol, you're gonna take your, your frame and your slide, Made them up together, right? And just made up the rails. 
slide this on, okay? You're gonna line up the slide in the frame, make sure everything's lined up real good, and you're gonna push this button back up, just like that. Now it's all locked into place. You're gonna turn your key back to the 12 o'clock position, pull your key out, function check, nice and smooth, you're good to go. Now the last step, as always, Pops field wipes, okay? Let's grab one of these wipes. And you're just gonna wipe the whole thing down. Wipe down the slide, get the hammer back there, work the safety, get that. You can get it on the plastic too, that's fine. Make sure you get some on your trigger. Just wipe the whole thing down till it's nice and shiny, nice and coated. And again, guys, it, these field wipes, they don't just lubricate. They add a layer of protection to the firearm. So I, I love using these field wipes. And then there you go, guys. That's how you clean the uh, Walther PK380. But uh, don't forget, guys, you should always clean your magazines as well. Now, if they're not too dirty, you just take your field wipe, wipe them down real quick. As you can see, there, there isn't too much carbon buildup on the mags. But you want to give them a good wipe down too. And there you go. That's it. Walther PK380 completely cleaned. That's how we do it, guys. Um, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you watching. And we'll catch you next time.